All right, all right, all right. Hello and welcome back to another episode of TCAP Recap. Tonight, we set our sights on a 32-year-old plumber from Queens, New York named Joshua Cologne, who showed up to the Stinghouse to lay some pipe and ended up laying down the truth that he was a repeat offender. Before we dive in and get a little crazy, I do want to give a quick shout out to my subscribers because y'all are fucking awesome. Much love. And I do have one request to make. If you could like this video and subscribe to my channel. What? It's a question. And that was my best Jeff Stacy impression in return for your like and subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. Like the video if it's worth it. Subscribe if you like my content. It's all good. Let's get back to business. So we're going to be in Fairfield, Connecticut on the set of Hanson vs. Predator for this one. Joshua Cologne is a husky man who is regarded as possibly the most inconsiderate predator we'll ever see. He is famous for bringing food for himself and not the decoy, leading to a nice, awkward interaction. But my man shrugs it off and just powers through, goes to take a shit, gets his ass busted. I mean, he probably just had to piss, but I like to think that he had to make a duty. It's kind of funnier that way, imagining him suffering through the interview with Chris Hansen with that kind of pressure also bearing down on him. Despite these rather negative qualities, this guy does talk like he's wearing Wonder Woman's lasso of truth as a fucking belt. He just cannot seem to tell a lie for the life of him. This leads to all manners of crazy shit like him admitting to the police that he'd already raped a 15-year-old boy in the past, so he was just racking up the charges at that point, going for the high score. He ended up getting seven years in prison with only three to serve, though. What the fuck, right? He admitted to raping this 15-year-old boy. It wasn't a decoy or a sting. It was a real person. And he only got three years. I mean, he had to do the other stuff like register as a sex offender and all that good shit. But it just doesn't seem right that he got only three years for what he did. Anyway, I do think that he is honest enough in both his interview with Chris and his subsequent interrogation, which I might make the first interrogation that I cover simply because it follows this one. Let me get back to you on that. I think that his storyline overall is one of honesty. He knows who Chris Hansen is. He's seen TCAP before. He lays it all out for all to see. What kind of person incriminates themselves to the extent that Joshua Cologne does? It's incredible. And you really you wonder why. What is he doing? What's his strategy here? So as we go through, we'll be watching for telltale signs. Is he just stupid? Is he ready for repentance? Like, was the burden too much and he just had to turn himself in like Raskolnikov, the main character from Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky, who murders his landlady and the guilt just eats away at him until he, you know, turns himself in. Now, I don't think that's the case, but this guy is bizarre. He tells Chris up front, hey, I'm not going to answer any questions, and then he proceeds to answer all his questions. Quite the bizarre guy, Joshua Cologne. He seems to be a pretty underrated predator. I, I think he's pretty good. And that may actually be the first time that I've ever said a predator is underrated rather than, like, famous or infamous. So let's jump in. Shout out to Walls for posting the uncut footage. And we're going to start off looking at this silver fox here, Mr. Chris Hansen. You can just see the tension locked inside of him waiting to unload on some predator. This is a disgruntled Chris Hansen past his prime. You know, the network didn't pick up Hansen versus Predator, so he's bitter. And now he's kind of like Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, if only I would have cashed a better check that one time. My life would be totally different. Everything would be different. Back in the TCAP days, it felt a lot more like it was about the journalism, about exposing this cancer. Now it feels like 
Chris Hansen's an orca playing with a seal, just making these grown men as playthings, tossing them aside for the police to mop up. And I'm here for it. <laughs> so with that said, let's get this thing rolling. Joshua Cologne was a 26-year-old plumber from New York when he surfaced in our Fairfield, Connecticut investigation. He brought an overnight bag and dinner for one. He wanted to have sex with a 12-year-old girl. What he got was a date with me. <laughs> Love it. Love the intro, Chris. Remarking on his car, that thing is bright yellow. And this dude packed like he was coming over to his adult girlfriend's house with an overnight bag and all this other shit. He's not attempting for stealth at all. He's not trying to be sneaky. And he's showing very little nerves, which I imagine, you know, he's done something like this before. So he's gotten past that first hurdle of doing it for the first time. And it's not like that's just a predator thing. That's a very human thing. The first time is always the hardest, but then, you know, you get through it, you survive, nothing too terrible happened, presumably, or maybe something bad did happen, like you're hungover as hell, but it was worth it. And then the next time it's a lot easier because, you know, you're experienced. And it seems like that's what happened to Joshua Cologne here. You know, he dipped his toes in the water when he was chatting with the girl over the various new apps that they use. And... He made first contact, he turned it to sex, and then he started saying weird things about claiming her virginity. And here he is, diving into the pool head first without checking the depth of the water, and coming up real short. Also, I am a big fan of this ghost Chris Hansen, so I think I might just snap a picture of that. Just, just to keep, you know, in the scrapbook. Let's get back to it. Mm. Oh, I forgot to mention something very important. He prefers that his girlfriend, the decoy, 12 years old, call him Poppy. And I love the way she says it. Nervous Nelly is one of the top tier decoys. Psychologists have spent years studying Jeff Sokol's uncut footage, and research shows that she gives off the perfect blend of nervous excitability anxiety and a kind of naive impetuousness that the predators find very alluring and it calms them down somehow it's probably a bit of power dynamics i think that many of these guys enjoy the sense of like lording over her and being in control or so they think and so it lulls them into this false sense of security until chris hansen boom comes out and, you know, shows him who's really poppy. It's so good to see you. Oh. It, were you, did you get here okay, though? Were the roads Ooh. bad? The real creepy, creepy door lock as he looks over. And then this guy strutting in, this big husky, husky fella, strutting in with this little grin on his mouth because he feels like he's got her locked away now. He's in control. The door is locked. Nobody's coming to bother him, and he's going to do what he's going to do. And yes, I do think that if she didn't want to have sex with him, he would have forced her. Look at this. I mean, he's he's not in shape at all, but he's got a lot of body mass that could get pretty dangerous if thrown around strategically. So it's it's spooky for sure. Even more spooky is the fact that this big fella has a big twin. And I don't want to impugn the honor of the twin in any way. I'm sure he's a nice guy. He can't control who his twin is. But what a terrifying thing it would be if they collaborated together and you got two of these dudes coming at you. Coming to get you. It's too much. It's too frightening. So we'll just leave it alone. Continue on. Really but I need you. Those are red velvet? Yeah. Do you like them? Yeah, I like them. Yeah. Do you want to try my picture? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What'd you bring me? I brought dinner for myself. Sorry. Oh. Because I, I, oh. I, I didn't get to finish my dinner. Oh, that's okay. Because I was okay. kind of in a rush. You can finish. I had stuff earlier. Oh, yeah. oh, 
Joshua Cologne, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is one of the most shocking moments in HVP. I'm sure you all remember where you were when you saw it for the first time. This grown man saying, no, <laughs> I didn't bring you anything. Well, okay, I'm joking a little bit, but it is quite shocking that he's just so upfront with being such a dickhead. It's almost a power move. It's so inconsiderate. He's telling the decoy, I don't give a fuck about you except for the fuck. I don't even care enough to offer to pick you up Chinese food as I pick up my own. And he does seem honestly surprised that she was expecting him to get her something. <laughs> See, I have experience in this type of situation, dealing with the food, of course. It's always a moral dilemma when you're picking something up for yourself and you have, you know, family, roommates, whatever, back at the house. You got to decide, do I get something just for myself and try to eat it before I get back or sneak it in? Or do I call back and see if anybody wants something, knowing full well that if I do, I'll end up spending 60 bucks at this fast food place? With family and friends, you can be a cheapskate and go for door number one every once in a while. You're not going to catch any flack from me. But in Joshua's situation, it is absolutely ludicrous and shows just how little he values the decoy as another human being capable of thoughts and desires. I guess he expected to just sit here stuffing his fucking face while she just waits for him to finish. What was he thinking? He moves through the sting as if in some kind of solipsistic dream where he's the only real person. You know, he packs a fucking bag to come over here, not worried at all about being caught, although he did display some caution in the messages. Once he committed, he committed. And he's not treating the decoy like anything other than a sex toy. And again, when he answers questions for Chris and the police, he just gives them everything and tells them stuff they had no way of finding out because he's so inward focused and narcissistic. So right now, working hypothesis, he is a very high latency narcissist. He just doesn't have the RAM, the computing power to handle all this high intensity shit flying at him at once. You know, he's a plumber, so he's good at details and that kind of shit, precision, but plumbing, and correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't seem like it's very high intensity. Like, they rarely have to work in a time crunch. And in this situation, Joshua has very little time to make decisions, and so he just takes the path of least resistance. All right, let's roll. Yeah, and then we can have cupcakes. Grab you something, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's okay. It's a nice house. Thanks. Wish I had a house like this. Am I afraid to use the bathroom because I it was, it was way colder? So he <laughs> he offers to go and get her something, which he knows that she's going to refuse because that's a crazy request. Like that would put him through a lot of trouble, and he just assumes that she'll say no. So he offers that up as a solace to kind of save some face and then tells her what a great house she has because she's a 30 year old woman who owns the house <clears throat> he thinks she's a 12 year old girl so this seems like a strange compliment to give somebody that young about their parents house however i'm sure many people were more mature than i was at 12 years old it still seems like a strange comment to me almost like telling somebody that their house looked like restaurant, like I mentioned before. I think that the decoy kind of threw him off when she questioned him about getting her food. But it doesn't matter anyway, because Joshua has now got one thing on his mind, getting to that bathroom. Now, I'm about to drop some PG-13 on y'all, but I'm not sure if he says one way or the other if he has to piss or take a dump. So we'll keep an eye out for any clues if we can solve this mystery. As of right now, though, I'm assuming that he has to take a dump because that just makes it so much funnier. Plus, one look at this guy and you know that he would have no problem going in that bathroom, blowing up that toilet, coming back out without washing his hands, and then sitting down to eat his food as the stench unravels behind him to fill the whole kitchen. Now that... You've got that image in your mind. Let's continue. 
Yeah, it's uh, right here. Kind of, you look hotter than the picture. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm really nervous. Yeah, right through Why there. Are you nervous? Oh. What? No, here, this one. Uh. Yeah, I know it's little. What a smooth, smooth operator. Oh, you look hotter than in your pictures. Dumbass. That's like saying, oh, you clean up real nice. You look like shit before, but now you look good. Yeah, your pictures, you were ugly as fuck, but now you're bangable, sure. And then he manages to walk past the bathroom, even though she's pointing at it. It's right there. It's like his thoughts make their way through his brain as tumbleweeds just bouncing through the desert. <laughs> and now he's making an absolutely rookie mistake by closing the bathroom door before he found the light switch. Don't do that, people. No matter what the situation, you want to know what you're getting yourself into before you shut that bathroom door. But at this point, if I was in his position and had already committed to this, I would just use my phone flashlight at this point, or even just my phone screen, pee by the light of that, because I don't want to look like some dunderhead coming back out of the bathroom to ask where the light switch is. Plus, if he does have to pee, he would have been able to do that before coming back out, getting busted by Chris. Now, if he did have to take a dump, I'm sure you can imagine the hilarity that would have ensued as Chris stood there waiting for him for 30 minutes, as the smell slowly seeps from under the door, as Joshua sits there in the pitch black, grunting. Oh, all right, that's enough. That's enough. Let's get to it. Good form, good form on the switch. Is there a light switch in here? Oh, it's behind you, is that it? Come on out, Joshua. Oh, you get a seat. Right over there. <laughs> right over there. Keep your hands. Keep your hands right there. Oh, that's good. Wow, he's a real husky boy. That is such a classic reveal, though. Him coming out, finding the camera. The, the hidden camera is behind the picture, actually. So that's what he saw. And looking up and seeing Chris Hansen, who we're about to find out. He knows who Chris Hansen is. And just that slow, oh, shit. <laughs> and just like that, everything came to a sudden, jarring halt. I always thought that Joshua looked a little bit like uh, Johnny Knoxville. Just, you know, bigger, pudgier. It could just be the glasses, though. Either way, he's in a whole bucket full of trouble. The first 30 seconds or so after they find out that they've been caught up in a sting are always the most interesting to me because it's those life-changing moments that happen in the blink of an eye and then suddenly everything's different and will never be the same. Everybody experiences those, obviously, but not of this negative magnitude. I mean, a 32-year-old forcing himself on a 12-year-old, it just makes the mind recoil in disgust. And that's why it's such a universally reviled thing. I've mentioned this in past episodes as well, but you get a DUI, drug possession, even like assault, if you get in a bar fight or something, those are all crimes that you can come back from pretty easily. You change your ways, you take it as a lesson, People are generally willing to give a lot more slack with those kind of crimes as long as you've changed your ways and became a better person. Being a sex offender, though, that's one of those crimes that sticks. You can't get rid of that stink. And in this moment, that's what Joshua is having to come to terms with, that he is now one of the sex offenders. His carefree, easygoing days as an oddly proportioned plumber are no more... Not a mas. Finito. But time waits for no man, so let's continue. I know who you are. You know who I am? Yes. Who am I? I see this on a show. What show? Um, it's the show about men meeting young girls. Men meeting young girls. Do you have keys in your pocket? Yes. Will you take them out first? <laughs> <laughs> So Wonder Woman has her lasso of truth, but Chris Hansen has his gaze of honesty, 
and Joshua is especially vulnerable to this superpower, apparently, because he is stunlocked into honesty. Even in response to Chris's question about the car keys, he answers so forcefully, like he just needs to get it out. It turns off the alarm. Oh, just press. <laughs> oh, man, just this little moment of shared humanity where they're trying to figure out how to get the car alarm to go off. It's like a meat cute situation, except not it's more like a meat sting operation. So you've seen my shows before. Yeah. How often? It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Well, guess what? We're starting up again. Okay. <laughs> Zing. And you are among our first guests. Okay. What's your name? Joshua. Joshua. Joshua what? Cologne. Cologne. And how old are you? I'm 32. 32. And how did you meet this Jenna Claire? I was on an app, app called Blink. And why did you think it was appropriate to talk to a girl who said she was 12 years old? I don't know why. 12? I know. It was wrong. This is a man who's revved up and ready to go. This guy came back from retirement so he could relive his glory days doing verbal jujitsu. I mean, verbal jujitsu with guys like JPW who could lie as easy as they could piss. Instead, he gets limp dick Joshua Cologne, who's just admitting to everything. Ah, uh, it must be so frustrating. This look Chris has on his face right now, he's wondering, did I come back for this? Is this what it's all about? Is this the class of criminals that I have to deal with in 2015? But let's see how hard he'll twist the screws on old Joshua here. What did you bring with you tonight? Huh? What did you bring with you tonight? Clothes. Clothes. Why would you need a change of clothes? Because I was going to stay over. Stay over? With a 12-year-old girl? Yeah. And yeah. what were you going to do with this girl? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Um, I guess, you know, I guess have sex. Have sex? Yeah. Holy shit, this guy. Have we ever seen other predators who are just so upfront with their intentions? You'll have to remind me in the comments because I can think of a few like James Rutherford who admitted that they were there for less than moral reasons. But this guy, he just comes right out with it. He shows a little bit of shame, a little bit of regret, but this is the face that... <laughs> this face could be a fucking meme that face when you show up for sex and chris hansen shows up instead you know this face is so good i might just have to snap a picture of this too because you never know when you're going to need a picture of this guy looking like a bozo right or am i just acting like a goddamn maniac i don't know you'll have to be the judge now you had quite the chat with this girl It's too bad you aren't old enough. I would marry you. Mm. You would marry a 12-year-old girl. If she was old enough. If she was old enough. But why would you even say that to a 12-year-old? Yeah. Okay, so you might have realized that if she were old enough, then she wouldn't be 12 anymore. She would be at least 18. But that's not an answer at all to what Chris asked. Chris recognizes that as just a lame deflection, and he just powers on through. Do you have any nieces and nephews, younger cousins? Yeah. Okay. Well, what if a guy was hitting on them like this? Yeah, I wouldn't like it. You wouldn't like it. So explain to me what was going on in your mind that made you think it was okay to come here and do the very same thing. I, 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 I don't want to say anything more. Well, you pretty much already said it. <laughs> you asked for her address. That is very true. He's already admitted that he was there to have sex with a 12-year-old. Now he doesn't want to say anything more way way too late you see he had sex with the girl on his mind when chris asked him about it so that's just what came out of his mouth the warning tumbleweed telling him not to talk had to slowly make its way from the center of his brain to the front where he could then act on it 
but he's going to promptly forget that he didn't want to talk anymore and continue to talk for quite a while. So let's let's check it out. I'll pick you up somewhere and we'll have sex if you want. I'll go slow and yes, it will hurt because she's a virgin, you said. This is all you, right? Yeah. You tell her to masturbate in preparation for your big night of sex with a virgin. Oh, 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 fucking power flex, man. Nervous Nelly came out with a look of steel on her face. She was not fucking around. And I don't blame her because she had to get close to him to do it. And he's pretty big. She's pretty small, but she still does an excellent job of disconcerting Joshua even more. Yes. Where are they? In my bag. What else is in the bag? Clothes and toothbrush, stuff like that. That's it? That's it. That's all you're going to find. Yeah, well, we'll finally make out and make love. I was thinking of staying over and leaving the next morning. So when I come over, we'll go to your room and you'll take off all your clothes. Yeah. Since That's I'm the boss. Yeah. Ooh, Why did you never call you Poppy? I don't want to say anymore. <laughs> what is now, now he gets embarrassed at the poppy part. Not the part about having sex with a minor. No, that, that's one thing. But admitting that he wanted to be called poppy by that same minor, that's where he draws the line in the sand. But our creepy Casanova really needs to up his sexting game because he shows zero finesse in those messages. He's just describing what they're going to do in robot terms. I will come over. We will go to your room. You will take off your clothes. I will take off my clothes. You will gasp at my penis and say it's the biggest you ever saw. It's just even more disrespect from this dude that he's not even willing to put in some effort. Let's keep going. Latin, Latin. Oh. Same. Nickname? Yeah. You wanted her to call you the boss. And then you say, I just hope your mom doesn't find out about me because I could get in serious trouble, you know, right? I could go to jail. Yep. Yeah. I know love knows no age, but most people don't think the same. Oh, poppy, poppy, poppy. Busting out the grandfather of all predator excuses. Love knows no age. Bullshit! In fact, I am designating that phrase a universal red flag. Let's continue. Twelve, Joshua. I know, I know, I messed up. Get him! Have you done this before? No. Lie. Have you ever contacted an underage girl online before? Yes. We have evidence of that, too. A 13-year-old. So why should I believe you've never done this before? I just... First of me, you just woke up. A chance. You woke up a few weeks ago and said, "I'm going to chat up this girl and drive from your home where? New York. In Brooklyn. In Queens. Queens. You said Brooklyn. Or do you work in Brooklyn? I work in Brooklyn. Okay. And you live in Queens. Yes. And what do you do for work in Brooklyn? I'm a plumber. A plumber. Good job. Yeah. Good pay. It's all right. Why would you toss it away for this? He breaks eye contact with Chris Hansen, so he's able to bend the truth a little bit here. He never met up with a young girl prior to this, but he did meet up with a young boy. The mention of that plumbing job got me thinking, though, because it probably is a good job, because he's probably in a union. Unless you're already wealthy, unions are your best friend. And don't let rich people tell you otherwise. I used to work at a manufacturing plant and we would create almost a million dollars in product every 12 hour shift. And we got paid a percent of a percent of a percent of a percent of that because they needed enough profits to give back to the shareholders, people who were already wealthy enough and had enough disposable income that they could buy into capital at other businesses to get profits that they don't work for. Oh, but they're investing in the company. Well, the company doesn't invest in the factory. No, that place was a goddamn nightmare and people regularly got hurt. 
the worst that occurred while I worked there, and I'm, I'm going to be vague because they would definitely sue me if they fucking could. This guy was working on a piece of machinery that had some nasty sludge inside of it, which was used in the process to make what we made. Machine malfunctions, sludge falls over this guy. He's screaming, getting chemical burns. The warehouse manager refuses to call an ambulance because then that might show up on the insurance as an injury event. He makes the goddamn HR lady drive this poor bastard to the hospital. That hospital doesn't have the proper facilities to deal with this, so they have to airlift the fucking guy to a bigger, better hospital with a better burn unit. And this is in a country like America, where at least we have OSHA and OK labor laws. Go to a place like, I don't know, Bangladesh, where, among other things, they lack labor organization laws, regulations, and are very easily exploited by these giant multinational corporations. That's where you see the human cost of the corporate fiduciary duty to profit above all else. And you get accidents like the 2013 DACA garment factory collapse, where 1,134 people died when the building collapsed after the owners ignored the cracks that had appeared in the foundation on the first floors and still sent in all the workers the next day to make their, you know, garments and clothing to send to America. And on May 24th, 2013, in the deadliest non-intentional structural failure in modern history, the whole thing collapsed. And like I said, 1,134 died and another 2,500 people were pulled out of the wreckage. So almost 4,000 people got sent into work when they knew the whole thing was unsteady, unsafe. And it's called the 2013 DACA garment factory collapse because there was also one in 2005 where 73 people died. Now we don't have that, but we do have Amazon, which fucks its workers every which way, which is why we should all be supporting their union efforts. Amazon is so powerful that you don't even recognize how powerful it is. Do you remember that in December 2021, six warehouse workers died because Amazon refused to shut down the warehouse despite incoming tornado weather? And as recently as June, they were still obstructing the investigation? Ah, That's wrong. It's wrong that billionaires exist while paying their workers a pittance, a pittance of what they make just off interest. So all those billionaires who pay their workers essentially nothing compared to their own wealth, they just hoard the wealth, sit on it, let it make them more money, while the rest of us get fucked. Alright everybody, I'm sorry about that. I just got way too overexcited about unions. You see, here at TCAP Recap, we're for the working class. We stand for the working class and fair wages because divided we beg, united we bargain. Let's get back to it. What do you want people to know about all this? Really nothing. Nothing. <laughs> what do you think should happen to you? I guess I have no choice but to go to jail. Do you deserve it? Yeah. I mean, can't you explain to me what brought you here tonight? Chris is like, God damn it, dude. You're just saying, <laughs> you're just answering truthfully to everything, even about jail. Give me something to work with here. Come on, man. This face, this face is imploring Joshua to give him some meat to sink his teeth into. No. I mean, it's not right. It is not right. I, I know. <laughs> but help me to understand it. I, I don't know. I don't know what was going through my mind. You don't know? No. I mean, this is your chance to explain yourself. I... There's no way I'm getting out of this anyway, so I'm, I'm not going to say anymore. You shave down there. Smart guy. I like it smooth. He is maybe, maybe he is a lot smarter than I'm giving him credit for, and this is all just an act to get through it as fast as possible. Even though he knows that it's going to fuck him later on, he's just in so much pain that he'll do anything to get out, so he's telling the truth just without guile, without trying to be tricky. Maybe. You say you're going to groom yourself for this special event tonight. That's your car, right? Yeah, I share that car. 
You share that car with whom? My brother. Your brother. You have a twin brother? Yes, I do. What would he think about this? He wouldn't be happy. All your family in Queens? Oh. No. I mean, can you imagine having a twin brother? I wonder, I guess they, they must be close if they share the car. They must be living together. They must have a close bond. And what do you do when your twin brother, who you've known your entire life, really close, turns out to be a predator? That must just fuck you up in the head. His poor brother. My mom, my mom died and my father lives in Manhattan. In Manhattan. Well, Joshua, I don't know what else to say to you. Except that yeah. I'm Chris Hansen. And... This is an investigation called Hansen versus Predator. Okay. So if there's anything else you want people to know, <laughs> now is the time. This guy right here with the camera, absolute fucking legend. He is not afraid to get that camera up close and sweaty with some of these guys. He gets, you know, flecked with pizza grease when Jeff Sokol's chowing down. This guy gets right up in there. So... Props to that guy. Props to the cameraman. No. No. <laughs> You're free to leave. Um, can I use the bathroom? Because I've been holding it for quite some time. I think you should go. Oh, I l fucking love that. This guy's like, oh, come on. I've been holding it for a long time. Which, in a normal situation, human to human, you're inclined to say, go ahead. Because all of us have to piss or take a dump, I guess, in his case. So it's very basic, essential etiquette. But this is not a normal situation. This guy showed up to try to have sex with the 12-year-old. So Chris gives him the old hand to the side. Tells him, get the fuck out of here before I beat your ass. Except he says it with his eyes, of course. There's Ron Knight stalking up behind him to make sure he keeps moving, cowboy. But if Joshua Cologne turns around right now and says to Ron Knight, you know what, big boy? You're going to have to make me. Who wins in a fight? The noodle-armed but big-bellied Joshua Cologne or the muscled, thick-set, old-man strength of Ron Knight? Yeah, I definitely got to go with Ron Knight. He's an older guy, but he's about to bust out of that shirt. Just like Chris Hansen, he returned so he could maybe get the shot at taking down one of these guys himself. A shot at taking the shot. The Ron Knight story. Go, please. Put your hands behind your back. Come right over here. Put your hands behind your back. Oh. Stay right there. The phone. Do you have anything in your pocket, sir? There's our camera guy. Getting right up in those ass cheeks. The headphones. Okay, sir. I'm going to have you sit in this car. Slide over. Watch your head. And I'm going to have you slide all the way over. In a normal episode of TCAP, this would be almost the end, but with Joshua Cologne, we're only halfway there, buddies. And what do you know, it's our friend the 40-year-old decoy up there looking out the door. Some comments have told me that he was like a rookie trainee cop or some shit, but I've also told myself that he was Chris Hansen's cocaine dealer and just needed some good cover to be on set all the time, so I'm not really sure who to believe but I'll keep up the research. You okay? Mm -hmm. Red four, sir. All right, so obviously, awkward car ride, right? We watch all the Predos from HVP go on this car ride. Who had the most awkward car ride? I'm leaning towards Vincent D'Ambrosio because he was just sobbing uncontrollably the whole time. But I am open for your thoughts, so please let me know what you think. Wow. 
walk of shame. Nothing hidden on your person? No. Okay. You need I, to use the bathroom? I did, I did tell them that I have some bags in there. Where are they? In the yellow bag. Paperwork. Okay, but there's nothing on you right now? No. Okay. Okay. You need to use the bathroom? Yes. Okay, right through <laughs> Finally. Um, the officers in uniform are going to do what we call process you, okay? I know you've never been arrested, but they're going to fingerprint you and photograph you. Oh, what a you. shot. Um, when they're done... Look at that. This guy just posted up in jail now. Him being behind bars doesn't seem to please him as much as it pleases us, does it? I'd like to take you upstairs if you'd like to, an opportunity to talk. You know, that's going to be up to you. Uh, you'll be advised of your Miranda rights. I think you should think about it as you're spending time down here. Because right now, we only have one version of events. We don't have your side of the story. Okay? Classic line by the cop there. She just wants his side of the story. But people, I'm telling you, never talk to the cops without a lawyer. Because you can't talk your way out of trouble. You can only talk your way into more trouble. And you're not even going to be doing deals with the police. They're only there to get evidence against you, not to get evidence to help you, all right? Joshua is a special case because he's playing his own game by a whole different set of rules that I don't really understand. Let's see how it goes for him. Is Josh okay or do you like Joshua? It's Josh as well. People call you Josh. Get comfortable, have a seat. How are they downstairs? Sorry. Don't, don't wait on us. We've already eaten dinner, so we're good to go. You're the hungry guy. Um, <laughs> okay, so obviously you know that we want to understand a little bit about what you, what brought you to Fairfield, Connecticut tonight. So we're hoping you can explain that to us. To meet a young girl. Oh, pardon me? To meet a young girl. Okay. How young? What's her name? How did you meet her? Twelve. She told you she was twelve? Yes. Okay. Just this guy, he's an enigma. Look at him chow down on that low main after having casually admitted he was there to have sex with a 12 year old. He has no fucks to give. He has no fucks to give. He just has fucks to take because this cop is about to fuck him up. Tell us a little bit about um, if, as early as you remember your first conversations and kind of how your relationship with with her developed from that first contact? I don't have to answer these questions, right? You don't? I mean, I'm answering these questions is going to incriminate myself, obviously, right? It depends. I mean, I don't know. I, I told you before that it's going to allow us to understand your side of the story. And we can't predict what you're going to say, so could you potentially say something that's incriminating? Of course. Could you also say something that maybe explains things? Of course. But without being in your mind and knowing what you're going to say, I, you know, I, I don't want you to feel like we're trying to trick you because you're not, but we don't know what you're going to say. You know what I mean? I'm just... <laughs> this guy, Joshua Cologne, man, he knows he doesn't have to talk. He knows he could incriminate himself further. The cops try some half-assed like, well, we don't know what you're going to say, so maybe you could help yourself. But this is some wild shit. I know he said earlier that his thoughts were like tumbleweeds slowly drifting across the desert of his mind but now i think they're more like juggling balls he can only carry you know two or three at a time keeping them in the air and the thought that told him hey man don't incriminate yourself anymore somehow got knocked out of the rotation and now the only balls he's juggling with are ones that are telling him do it tell him everything and so that's what he does to be fair. To be quite honest, I mean, I was on the side, it was to meet a young girl, and, and I, I came to meet her. I mean, that's, that's all I can say. Okay. Yeah. And you asked her how old she was? Yeah. And what did she tell you? She said 12. Okay, did she tell you when she was turning 13? I don't, I don't remember. Okay. And is 12 an age that you're comfortable with? You, that's your preference, or? I date older, younger, I mean, not younger than 12, but, you know, 12 and up. Okay. You're how old? 32. You're 32? Okay. It's like he doesn't see anything wrong with it, so he has no shame about admitting it. It's so bizarre. Um, at what point does it become like a sexual conversation? And how does that happen? I don't know. I mean, it just came up, I guess. I guess because it was on my mind. But... Had she sent you pictures yeah. of herself? Yeah. 
And have you sent pictures of yourself? I guess I don't remember. Oh. Okay. Those are some pictures from TCAP that I do not want to see at any point in my life. Would you say that you were sexually attracted to her? Yeah. Right off the bat, or was it something that developed over conversation, or? I guess over conversation. When was the last time you maybe spoke with somebody who was in that age group, 12, 13? It's been a while. It's a while. Ooh. I you know, go ahead. No, I mean, I talked, but I never actually went to meet them because I was always afraid. Of what? To be like on that guy's show. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were afraid of? <laughs> I can't say that I blame you. <laughs> so his face immediately I know was. That is fucking hilarious that he was specifically worried about meeting Chris Hansen and out of all the decoys, all the stings in the nation, all the stings in the world, he walks into HVP as they start back up again and gets caught. One of the first ones. Like the odds of getting busted by Chris Hansen in 2015 for any random preto around the nation would have been astronomically low. But just like other statistics for like rare diseases or strange ways to die, even if your chance is like one in a billion, well, somebody's got to be that one in a billion. And this time, it's Joshua Cologne. Sucks to suck, I guess. I, mean, I don't know what else to say. What, do you, what was your intention? What do you envision yourself doing right now if that hadn't happened? I don't know. I was going to hang out. You know. I guess I have sex. Your intention was to have sex with her? Yeah. Okay. Did you tell her you loved her? Yes. Why? Oh, oh boy. Just to kind of, I don't know, kind of pull, pull her in, I guess, or something. To pull her in? Oh my god. This guy has given up the whole game, just admitting straight up to everything, to wanting to have sex, to trying to trick her by saying he loves her. No secrets held back. The the twelve year old today said yeah. that she had she was a virgin. Yeah. And you liked that, that she didn't have experience? Mm -hmm. During the police interrogation, Cologne appears to come clean, and then he makes a startling admission about a previous rendezvous with a 15-year-old boy. I just, uh, I want to make sure that we have everything out on the table. I mean, I did have sexual relations with someone older than 12. How old? 15. When was that? Uh, a few months back. Okay, and where did that happen? Um, that was... That was, uh, was like, I think it was about Long Island. Like, where is this coming from? A guilty conscience? Does he want to tell people? Does he want to repent? Or does he just have a void in his skull where his brain should be? Was it a similar, similar situation, Stephen, like this? Like we had met over over the internet and... Yeah. I mean, uh, Josh? Yes. Okay. Okay. Do you remember her name? No, it's not a her. Okay. Do you remember his name? Dave. David? Did you meet... Also, plot twist. Turns out that Joshua Cologne, bisexual, goes both ways. Although with him, I question whether it's, you know... A bisexual thing or just a power thing because he does go after minors so it's probably a lot more about the power than anything else but i'd be interested in hearing your thoughts so let me know you with david one time or more than one time time and what happened when you met with him yeah, it sucks. is there any anybody else no that's it Okay, so your phone, are there any pictures or images or videos of younger people? Yes. And kind of will give me an idea of what we're going to be looking at. Boys, yes. girls, Both. about what age? Both. Boys and girls? Yeah. And what age group? I guess about 12, 12 or older. Okay. Jesus, how? 12 and older? older. How did this guy only get three years in prison? 
he admitted to previous felonious assaults, has child porn on his phone, yet gets a seven-year sentence suspended to three. It just boggles the fucking mind that this guy gets three years in prison for this while some poor fucking addict who gets caught with dope on him will get sent away for five. Or if they have enough for the cops to justify hitting him with distribution, even if it's just personal use because they have a high tolerance, fuck, man, that's another, that's 10 years. The prison industrial complex always needs more bodies to keep the slave labor they run in there going. We shouldn't have privately owned prisons. That's so fucked up too, man. Ah, this is a stressful, stressful episode for me. Got to keep my blood pressure under control. Handcuffs. I have it. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Hope you enjoyed that low main, big boy. Cologne pleaded guilty. He received a seven-year suspended sentence. He served three years in prison and is about to be paroled any day now. He's got to register as a sex offender for 10 years. 10 years. Not enough. Why would he get off the predator registry after 10 years? It doesn't make any sense. All right, but that's the end of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about my thoughts on unions. I always enjoy a spirited discussion about labor politics. Otherwise, just let me know what you think about Joshua Cologne. And yeah, I hope you're enjoying whatever you're doing. And I will catch you on the flip side.